Hello YouTube, XCT here. This video is about Sharp, a 40-point machine on Hectobox, and basically is all about C Sharp and .NET. For user, we exploit a deserialization vulnerability in a net remoting service, and for root, a WCF service. So after the initial port scan, um, we can see that we have MSRPC, NetBIOS, SMB, and some unknown service. So let's look at the unknown service first. Doesn't react to curl, so it's probably not a web server. Um, so let's look at SMB. You can just enter any password here because it allows um, anonymous login. So let's look at the shares. And we can actually connect to the Kanban share. And if you look at the contents, um, there's a lot of DLLs here, an exe file, so some kind of program. Um, so let's actually download that. Okay, so let's have a look at the files. So something I always like to do is just um, grab over the files um, for password in case there's something there. Um, if it wouldn't work, we could reverse it in dnspy or something like that. But for now, I'm just doing a grab here. So just a lot of results. Let's scroll a bit here. And this looks actually interesting. Um, if we look down here, there seems to be an administrator with an encrypted password and also another another user called Lars, which also has an encrypted password. I'm just going to copy that here. And if you Google for Kanban and encrypted password, you will eventually find um, this um, exploitDB entry, which basically tells us how to decrypt these passwords. And it's basically Base64 encoded um, and then DES encrypted. And you can use this Python script to decrypt the password or just use um, Cyberchef with this key and IV we saw here in the exploitDB entry, right? So let's copy the password here. All right, so that's the one for the administrator. Let's look at the one from Lars. So what I didn't show you before is that if we try to connect to the other share we saw, um, this dev share, we will get an access denied. But if we now use this username we just got with the password, we're actually able to connect. And there's a couple of new files here. So let's download them. Let's look at the node. So from the notes, we can see that um, this is probably a .NET binary and we probably have to do something with it. So we'll continue on a Windows VM to analyze it in DNSpy. So I copied the files over to my Windows VM. And now we have them here and I'm going to have a look at them in DNSpy. So let's do that. Let's look at the server first. And here we can see that there isn't so much going on really. Um, we can see the port um, we saw in the box too. Um, we can see the name of the endpoint, and we can also see that it uses the binary server format as sync provider, which will be interesting later on um, with this type filter level setting of full. Um, we don't have to understand it right now. Um, it's just a quick overview over the server, and it isn't more code than this. So there must be some kind of generic vulnerability. Let's have a look at the client. And here the code is even shorter. We have a username and the password, uh, which will be useful, of course. And then we can see that this client is just connecting to the endpoint we saw earlier. That's basically it, nothing more going on. If you Google for net remoting and also for this binary server from a sync provider, you will eventually find this post by James Forshaw, which describes um, a vulnerability, basically. Um, he gives a rough overview on how it works. Um, basically, this is um, remote method invocation, and you call a method on the client. It will go through multiple layers, um, which are called sinks here. And then on the server, a specific method will be called. And if you scroll down a bit, um, he talks about that um, there's a deserialization vulnerability because all the messages get serialized and deserialized. 
And this is being done in an unsafe way if it's configured in a specific way. Um, and as it turns out, this the setting, this type filter level dot full is exactly what makes this um, exploitable. So there's also another post by FCQ Labs, which is pretty interesting. Um, they exploit this vulnerability in a specific product and this uh, video management software. But the way this is being exploited um, can also be used here on this challenge because, um, as I said, it's a kind of generic vulnerability. So let's scroll down a bit and see if they have some details. Here we can see this type filter level um, to full, which is in the end the issue. And they exploit it by using YSO serial. Um, here we can also see the parameters, so it's really easy for us. We just have to copy this. And it's using this exploit remoting service.exe tool, which is linked a bit um, further down in this post. And we also see how this is being called here. So all there's left to do really is to grab this tool, grab by serial, generate the payload and run it. So let's do that. Here we can see this uh, binary being linked. So I downloaded this, um, opened it in Visual Studio, and then you can just um, go right click build and you will have it. Let's do that. Actually going for the rebuild here because I've already done it. Now it shows us here the path where the binary is. So I'm going to open a command line there. And also we need a second one to generate the YSO serial payload. I have that on my desktop. So now we have to think about um, what we want as an actual payload. So I'm going to use Cyberchef here. I want to run basically a base64 encoded um, command, which is this one. It will grab a txt file from my box and then execute it. So this txt file um, must contain PowerShell commands. And in order to use this uh, space64 encoded, we have to first um, do this UTF encoding, um, which basically looks like this, and then we have to base64 encode it. And this is the, the thing we can feed to YSO serial then. Um, we will have a look later at what the contents of runtxt are. For now, um, let's just focus on getting this YSO serial payload ready. So this is basically just um, copied from the post and then we run PowerShell, encoded command, copy this thing. and get this nice looking output. And again, just copied from the post, we are going to run um, the command it mentions, run the exe, give it the endpoint, give it the username and password, and we should be good. So now let's have a quick look at this run.txt to understand what it does. So basically, um, I'm downloading a file, which is xc.exe, which is my um, own Golang reverse shell. And it will basically just download it to program data and then execute it. And the shell takes the arguments um, from its file name, so it will connect back to my box on port 1337. Um, all that's left to do now is, um, first of all, uh, start a web server. So just one issue remaining. Um, basically, we just have one open VPN connection from Hack the Box. So you could either decide to give it your Windows or your Linux VM. Or in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to route my Windows VM through the Linux one. So I can reach it from Windows, but catch the shell on Linux. Basically, both of my VMs share a host-only network. Um, it's here on this IP. And uh, Windows VM will have this Kali VM as a default gateway. Basically like this, the default gateway is the Kali VM. So the only thing left to do is to enable forwarding and net. So let's do that. I'm going to copy that from my notes here. It's always the same. So 
And this is public, so you can just grab it from here too if you want. Just have to specify the outgoing interface, which is the VPN one. And the incoming, this is the connection where the Windows VM can reach the Linux VM. So let's try to ping the target from the Windows VM. And yep, that worked, okay. So now the Windows VM can reach the target and we can catch the shell on the Kali site. So let's start a listener and run the payload we prepared earlier. And we can see that we got a hit on our web server. This run.txt was grabbed and also xc was downloaded. And we got a shell here. So let's look for the flag. And that gives us the user flag. So um, just a quick overview about the tool. And this is basically a reverse shell with a few extra features. So if you type help, you get a list of commands and let's go through them. We can upload, download, we can do local port forwarding and remote port forwarding. Um, there's plugins, we don't have to bother with these. Um, I wrote one to grab the flag when you connect, um, for example, you can do stuff like that. Um, issue shell commands, read responses and so on. Um, spawn will just um, spawn another XC on another port. Um, you can get a shell, it's just a wrapped CMD. Um, you can do runners to switch users. You can spawn a meta operator shell from here. You can restart the thing. You can go into PowerShell. You can connect to a bind shell. Um, you can also change the user with PowerShell. And you can start um, a privacy check with the bounce command, which is basically the script from itman which is being run uh, called um, invoke privilege check. Um, and yeah, the last one is you can um, run .NET binaries um, from memory, like Rubius or stuff like that. So let's do a quick violence check, something I always do. And it's done, so let's look at the results. In this case, it didn't really find the privilege, but it's still interesting um, to see which ports we have open and so on. And one thing that's actually interesting here is that it found a service. Here we have this WCF server, which is run as local system. And that's actually the one we are also going to exploit for the privilege escalation part. So we got that info from the script. But other than that, it does a lot of useful um, checks. And I think it's one of the most useful privilege escalation scripts on Windows. So let's look around a bit. In documents, we have this WCF folder. And again, we have a client and a server. And as we know from the output from the privilege escalation script, um, something like that is running a system. So that's actually the thing here we are going to have to exploit. So how can we copy this off the box? Um, you can actually do that easily with XC. Just going to start PowerShell. Um, this one will have AMSI bypassed, so that's also something that's integrated. And now let's just um, make a zip out of this. And then we can use the download command to actually download the file. And it took a while, but the download is complete. So I copied these over to my Windows VM and opened it in Visual Studio because this time we have the source code. Um, just one word of advice here. Opening Visual Studio projects can be dangerous. Um, some people got owned um, a while back, so be sure to review them. Okay, so let's explore this a bit. Um, we have this um, WCF connection. Uh, we can see the endpoint and it's calling a few functions here. So let's see if we can find um, these functions. And turns out they are in this remoting.cs file. And let's start from the top. Basically, we have get users, disk info, CPU info, RAM info, and invoke PowerShell, which sounds very much like the thing we want here. And it's just using some PowerShell here. And in this invoke PowerShell function, we can basically just give it any any PowerShell and it will execute it. 
So that's nice. Um, how can we get the client to use this? Well, we have the source code. We can just add the line here, which will invoke the method. So let's do invoke PowerShell. And as a payload, we're basically using the exact same thing we've been using before to get a shell, just that we don't um, base64 encode it here. And now we are getting this run2.txt. Let's have a look at that one. And this is basically the same as the normal run.txt, only that we are now saving the XC binary with another port, uh, which is 1338. So we can keep this shell. It will, it will block the port, so we have to use another one. And we can start another shell. So I'm going to start the listener here too. So let's upload this. I zipped it on the Windows end, copied it to my Kali VM, and now we have this debug.zip. Um, basically, maybe let me show this. We're going to build this client with the added line from before. And then we're going to go to this uh, debug folder. And what I did was just zip all the contents in here. And so it has the DLLs and everything that it needs. So now we're going to upload that. Going to use PowerShell here again to unzip it. We just run this modified client and hopefully we will get a shell. And that seemed to have worked. And we are system. And we can read the root flag and that's basically it for the box. So I'd be happy if you subscribe, click the like button and see you next time.